Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the next item of business is Scottish Parliament corporate body questions. Question number one is withdrawn. Question two, Claudia Beamish, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliament corporate body what its response is Thank to the call by Just Transition for divestment of its pension fund from fossil fuels. Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, President Officer. Can I thank Claudia Beamish for the question and indeed recognise her long-standing commitment to the Just Transition Agenda that says to her uh, from the off that there is a clear separation of duties between the Scottish Parliament corporate body and the fund trustees to avoid any sense of a conflict of interest. And if I can just explain to her in, in detail, under Schedule 1 Part B Rule 8 of the Scottish Parliamentary Pensions Act 2009, the Scottish Parliamentary corporate body is responsible for the appointment of fund trustees. Under Part D Rule 32 of that same Act, the corporate body is also responsible for providing the funding for the employer pension contributions. And Part B Rule 5 of the Act says that the fund trustees are responsible for the governance, management and administration of the scheme and for the management of the scheme's assets. And that includes decisions about investments. So if I could say to Claudia Beamish that any decision about divestment is therefore a matter for fund trustees and not the corporate body. <coughs> Claudia Beamish. I thank Kezia Dugdale for that answer on behalf of the corporate body. And I do understand that um, division, which she helpfully explained um, for the public record as well. Um, I, I just do want to highlight, because this is an opportunity, if um, with the forbearance of the presiding officer, that um, in recognising the legal fiduciary duty of the pension trustees and the pension fund responsibilities and indeed the division of responsibilities and the reasons for that. I, I would like to highlight that a number of MSPs have recently signed a Divest Scotland pledge which says, I pledge to support the Scottish Government and Parliament divesting from fossil fuels and investing in a just transition to a zero carbon economy over an appropriate timescale. So, um, while I'm not in any way asking for reassurances, because that wouldn't be appropriate, but I wonder if it's appropriate for the corporate body simply to highlight this pledge to the fund trustees, which I would also be doing. And I, I do recognise that in addition to safeguarding the, the financial stability of our funds, um, that, um, that there is work ongoing, I understand, to explore further the wider ethical considerations, such as climate No, no, change. thank you. I think we've got the gist, and, and Ms Dugdale's made the corporate body's position clear, but if you want to uh, just do a brief response. Just briefly, President Officer, I, I welcome um, the response there from the member, reiterate the points about how, how aware we are of our responsibilities not to go beyond the scope of the 2009 Act, but, but perhaps make the member aware that we know the fund manager operates an environmental, social and corporate governance policy, which is in line with, and we are a signatory to, the UN principles for responsible investing. So these things are considered, but it is a matter for fund trustees, and she's perfectly placed to make direct re representations to those members. Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, there are tens of thousands of Scottish workers currently employed in the oil and gas sector, and this parliament is meant to represent the whole of Scotland. Does, does um, the member not agree that it would send a very unfortunate message from the corporate body of this parliament and on behalf of this parliament if we were to divest ourselves from a sector responsible for supporting so many Scottish families, their jobs and their livelihoods? Well, I think these are a bit wide of the mark, but uh, Ms Dugdale, it's up to you to say if you think they're wide of the mark. <laughs> I would just simply remind the member that that's beyond the scope of the responsibilities of the corporate body and I would refer him to his own party's representative on the fund trustees. Question to Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body how it ensures equality of access for those wishing to hold parliamentary events on site. Lee McArthur. Thank Elaine Smith for the question. Any organisation can hold an event at the Scottish Parliament as long as they fulfil the SPCB's agreed criteria for member-sponsored events. This includes completing an event request form and securing a sponsoring member for an event that all members will be invited to attend. If the event meets the criteria, then it is allocated accordingly and an events officer will work with the event organiser to ensure all planning, organisation and delivery of the event is completed. In order to ensure equality of access uh, for member-sponsored events, there is no charge for venue hire or for any of the Parliament's audiovisual equipment, for example, plasma screens with built-in PCs. However, 
any hired in services such as catering or additional audiovisual equipment, for example, a PA system, video recording, etc., are recharged back to the event organiser. Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer, and uh, I thank the member for the response, but I'm thinking beyond just organised events through the events team. And in my first speech 20 years ago, I chose to promote the need for an accessible parliament building with a creche and arena for trade and industry exhibits, innovative schemes during recess for young people and a resource for community groups. And some of that has happened. But what I didn't expect was the creeping commercialisation of events, pricing people out of using the building unless they can get corporate sponsorship. So is the SPCB aware that the costs associated with additional necessary equipment, for example, the provision of microphones in a PA system, particularly to assist the hard of hearing and allow access to an induction loop is prohibitive for many organisations and MSP sponsored events and will they look at removing these barriers in line with their founding principles which emphasise accessibility and equality of access? Liam McArthur. Um, I thank uh, Elaine Smith for a follow-up uh, supplementary. Um, I, I entirely agree with her in relation to the founding principle as the Parliament uh, was about uh, accessibility, and I think uh, we have a, a strong rack, track record in that respect. I, I would be interested in the specifics of the, the, the concerns if they relate to a particular incident. What I can say is that uh, the uh, committee rooms are all fitted with uh, induction uh, loops. There is uh, a, a mobile um, induction loop in the member's room uh, that can be used, although for obvious reasons you wouldn't necessarily want to have that on on a, on a permanent basis. So I think support is, is there for uh, events. Uh, I think it is uh, not unreasonable uh, for the, uh, the Parliament to draw a distinction between member-sponsored event, uh, events and the other uh, activities and events that take part uh, in this Parliament. And, and I think that the, uh, the, the costs that are incurred through that uh, are, are rightly fall on the event uh, organiser and, and I don't think necessarily that that inhibits the accessibility of this, uh, this parliament which as I say uh, has a, a fairly proud record of being able uh, to, to host a very wide range of events through the course of, of any given year. Maurice Corrie. Officer, um, I'm following on from Elaine Smith's uh, uh, question. Um, one of the things I find very difficult, very poor here, is the uh, IT support we get when we're trying to run CPGs. Um, and on several occasions, we've had to get scurry around trying to find a technician. And in fact, I had to haul somebody off a bus stop line uh, not so very long ago to come back in and persuade him and beg him to sort it out because we had two presentations. Now, this is not really a good presentation of the Parliament if we're going to ask people to come in and encourage them to come in and have these cross-party groups groups, uh, what can the corporate body do to, to amend that and to ensure that we as conveners of cross-party groups have the confidence in that we can deliver our presentations for our people coming in, our groups, uh, reliably? Liam McArthur. Well, I think it's, it's probably important to point out that the cross-party groups uh, are, of course, um, uh, have access to the facilities within uh, the Parliament, access to the rooms, access to the IT equipment within those rooms. Uh, but I think we take a, a step beyond uh, what would be reasonable to, to have the, uh, the parliamentary um, staffing uh, to support the CPGs. That's never been the case. I think the costs of, of running CPGs uh, have never been met by the, the Parliament, and they do sit distinct from member-sponsored events. Uh, so while I think the technology uh, absolutely should be made uh, available, we cannot, I think, get into the situation where we have the, the staff available. Now, I think Maurice Corrie is right that where staff are, are, are on hand, they are invariably more than uh, willing to, to help out. But I think in terms of the preparation for the events, it is incumbent upon those organising, whether the convener of the, the CPG or indeed um, the, uh, those who are acting as a, a secretariat, to identify what the needs are going to be in terms of IT and ensure that the equipment I I is there and it functions uh, properly. I'm aware that there are sometimes issues around uh, password accessibility. Uh, but again, uh, that is about the preparation uh, for the CPG rather than necessarily uh, something which the, the Scottish Parliament, uh, as I say, can go beyond uh, what we do at the moment uh, in relation to, to the support for the CPGs. Claudia Beamish. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd just like to highlight and ask um, Liam MacArthur if you could take back to the corporate body that if we have the equipment, then we need the support. Yeah, and frankly, absolutely. there are a lot of very marginalised communities and groups and individuals who come into the wide range mm -hmm. of groups and I would, I'm very disappointed to hear that the equipment's there, but we're not all IT experts, and I've been put in the same position as Maurice Corrie in the past, so I'd ask him to take it back to the corporate Absolutely. body, please. Liam McArthur. 
I'm happy enough to um, ask the, co the corporate body to reflect further uh, on this. I don't think, I'm not sure whether uh, Claudia Beanish is, is asking the corporate body uh, for a fundamental rethink of the relationship we have with, with um, CPGs, because I think if we go down that uh, track, there is a risk that we end up in a situation where not only are we providing the IT support, but that actually we're supporting these in the same way as we support members' uh, sponsored events. And, and I think uh, that has a whole series of, of, of consequences uh, which uh, Claudia Beamish uh, may want to uh, reflect on. I think, in terms of the IT, I think in terms of the IT support, I think we have all been in situations where at the start of meetings, uh, passwords have, have, have not been uh, put in uh, correctly, that there are glitches in the system. I think all that that does, though, is re-emphasise the need to make sure in the preparation for those events that there is actually there's consideration given to what the IT requirements are uh, and to make sure that that is followed where uh, uh, Parliament staff are more than willing to provide whatever support that they can, but requiring parliamentary staff to be here and on hand to provide ongoing support for CPGs that go on and can go on until fairly late in the evening, uh, I, I think we put a strain on, on, on that parliamentary staff and, and on the parliamentary resources, which are, are consequences which I think um, uh, Claudia Beamish would want to reflect on further. Thank you. That concludes corporate body questions, and we're going to move on to the next item of business shortly while the front benches take their positions, please.